Hello, my name is David Duber. I'm here to talk about advanced issues in specifying regression models with single indicator latent variables. This is a follow-up talk to another talk I gave with Danny Rosencrantz about managing measurement error in regression analyses using M+. A link is available in the description to this video. You should go watch that video before you watch this one because the models that we're using in this video are the same as the models used in that video. So the context is we have a regression analysis in which there is a measurement error in the predictors and in the outcome. We're correcting for those using single indicator latent variables. Now what's new in this model versus the ones in the previous talk are that we also have two additional observed predictors, parent gender, PGEN, and parent sexual orientation, P sex H. And those are predictors of the parental acceptance variable. And so the the input file looks very similar to the one before, except now we have pgen and p6h as predictors of pa1. And the way that this model is set up, pa1 on all of the predictor variables is sort of the, to me, intuitive way to set up the regression model. Unfortunately, it's not correct. If you were to run this model, you would get a non-zero chi-square test of model fit, which doesn't make sense because this is a regression model. It's saturated. Chi-squared should be zero. And so what's wrong with that model is that the correlation between pgen, p sex h, and the single indicator latent variables was fixed to zero in the previous model. I'm not really sure why, but we need what we need to do is we need to specify that all those variables can co-vary freely with each other with this with statement. All the predictors with all of the predictors. Now they can freely co-vary. This specifies a model that M plus will analyze and give us an error. The problem is that the first order derivative product matrix is a non-positive definite. This means our standard errors will not be trustworthy, so we aren't going to look at the model results for that. We have to fix this problem of, of untrustworthy standard errors first, and we can do that using bootstrapping. Instead of using a theoretical computation for our sampling distribution to create the st standard errors, we can bootstrap which creates a empirical sampling distribution based on resampling from our data. And standard, this allows for standard errors to be directly estimated from that empirical sampling distribution. And we don't have to refer to the expected information matrix. So that non-positive definiteness is not an issue for us here. When we do that, we get results. Uh, in particular, that with statement, it, it helped specify the model correctly so that our chi-square value is zero. That's all good. It's specified correctly. And we get results with standard errors and p-values that we can trust as much as you trust the bootstrap distribution. So everything here is good. But what if we wanted to handle the missing data correctly? There's a, a decent amount of missing data in this sample. And it turns out that declaring the single indicator latent variables, since it pulls CFIA, CFIC, DERS, RFS, MGP, and PA into the likelihood function, the deletion mechanism is different. And so it's kind of partially handling missing data in the sense that less data is being thrown out. But if we had an auxiliary correlate, we could use that to do a better job of dealing with the missing data. So there's another variable in this data set, parental age, P age, that we're going to use as an auxiliary correlate. We just correlate with everything else in the model. So that with statement, we had all the predictors with all the predictors. We're going to just put pH on that also, so that pH is correlated with all those. And then separately, we'll specify that parental age is correlated with the latent parental acceptance variable. And as a side note, there's an auxiliary command in M plus in the variable block. You can't use that for missing data handling in full, with full information maximum likelihood. I've gotten that question a few times, so I thought I'd let you know. So we get some new results. They don't look terribly different, um, but if there was a lot of added information from incorporating the p age variable, then these would be a bit different than the previous results. So another thing that we can deal with in, using single nuclear latent variables is interactions. So a lot of times, if you're trying to use a full structural equation modeling approach, the interaction term uh, can substantially increase the computational complexity of the model. 
but with the singlet nuclear latent variables, it's pretty simple. Bisbee et al. in 2006 derived a formula for the unreliable variance of xy. So that's the error variance of the observed variable. That's the indicator on this SILV. And the formula is here. I have some supplemental files that you can see. There's a link to them uh, in the description to this video that show all these calculations for the, the error variances and whatnot. So the interaction term, we can compute the interaction in the define command. First, you center the variables involved in the interaction, and then just multiply them together to create the interaction term. The SILV for that interaction term is specified exactly the same way as before. And now we stick it in our on command and in the correlation, all the predictors with all the predictors. So it's not a really big deal. And we get new results with a coefficient and p-value for our interaction term. So that's the end of this talk. Thank you for listening, and I hope you found it useful.